Greetings once again, it is Colin Clapp from Online Marketing Done For You, uh, coming at you from Hoi An in Vietnam once again. Uh, yep, I, uh, today's topic is um, why some websites succeed and some don't. And it's actually pretty boring and I'm sorry to be the revealer of great uh, sad news. It is pretty boring and it comes down to one thing and that is search. So I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so yeah, if you, uh, yesterday remember I started talking about, uh, this is all, I mean everything I'm talking about really is all related to website effectiveness and getting a return on your website. So website return on investment is linked to website effectiveness. So this, this is all I'm really talking about. So if you wanna um, uh, catch up on yesterday, just go back in and uh, check it out on YouTube or Facebook and uh, you, you'll, you'll see where I'm going with that. Uh, and I said today that I would dive a little bit deeper on you know, why they succeed and why they don't. But if you know anyone else who is um, frustrated by their website, uh, it's not delivering the results, then please share this video with them, uh, tell them about these talks uh, and they may learn something and it may be very valuable and help them stop being frustrated. frustrated. So I'm passionate about, I think there's a disease, a disease called unfulfilled website expectations and it is going untreated and it shouldn't go untreated because you are entitled to a return on investment, you are entitled to data and you should be able that data is freely available, Google wants you to succeed and you can get it. So uh, they, yeah, they may learn something from these talks, so please, please do share. So yeah, let me dive into t t t today's topic. So, um, so I've already covered off like the, this is about it, it you know, let me, I'll, I'll recap again, you know, if you bought a season ticket to a sporting franchise and you rocked on up every single week, you would be highly disappointed if no one gave you the score, okay? And that's what this is about. You need to know the score if you're going to have an effective website. So that comes up through analytics, but let me sort of dive into why uh, a librarian could be a make could be make or break your business and, and and that comes down to this is understanding that google isn't really interested in how good your website looks i'm not saying it doesn't care at all google's actually interested in a couple of hundred nuances to your website that are going to make a difference for, for whether or not it gets found so let, let's get on to this whether or not it gets found Google's business model is built on one thing, and that is making it easy for people to get answers to questions they may have. So I'm pretty sure I'm not alone. How many times have you been to the search engine bar? Well, now, whether it's Google, Yahoo, Bing, or whatever you use, but when you type something in, the, the quality of the search engine determines the result back. And Google, who controls 90% of this, has made it their mission to make sure that when you type in a request, a question, you're going to get a, the, an, an answer that is really closely related to what you were doing. That's their sole purpose. And then everything else, you know, the advertiser and all the other apps, all comes off at the back of that doing really well. And if, if you haven't come to terms with that, what it means is, it doesn't matter how good your website looks, uh, whatever bells and whistles it's got on it, and arguably it could have too many bells and whistles, Google's not that interested. In fact, it will penalise you against some bells and whistles. Fundamentally, it just wants to know, if someone is searching for something, does your website contain what, what the answer is? With some high degree of relevancy and relevancy is a very key word and I'll maybe talk about that another day. So let me see if I can put that into really simple language as to why some succeed and some don't. Imagine, you know, if you're my age, you probably have spent some time in libraries or maybe if you're a bit younger, a library is something you've never even been into. I don't know. But if you have been into a library, and I'm going to assume most of you watching and listening have been into a library, imagine this, you, you, you want to find something else. Maybe you're investigating long-term fitness goals. 
Yeah, and you want to you want to research around this to topic. So you decide that you're going to go down to the library and find out more about it. You know, this is what you had to do before the internet, go down to the library. So you go down to the library in your local town or you're in a nice big city and there's a couple of libraries and you see two libraries sitting next to each other. And from the outside, they're these stunning architectural pieces, very well presented, looks like just very inviting to come through. So you, you step through the entrance door of, of library one and it's very intoxicating beautiful uh, plush furniture in the reception, uh, walls adorned with a great artwork and everything. Uh, feels very inviting in that sense, uh, but you can't see anyone. And there's very little uh, notice information. In fact, in this big reception, or as much as it's comfortable and you can just sit there and kind of, you know, pour yourself a drink and all those sorts of things, there's just one door sort of straight ahead and it says welcome come on in so you're interested in long-term fitness goals you're excited to find out answers on this so you're like well there's no one else here then I, I might as well go check it out so you you proceed forward go through the door open the door and you walk into this cavernous cavernous space huge space there's no dividers, there's no extra rooms, there's no, um, there's no signs, there's no shelving, there's no aisles. In fact, all you can see in front of you is piles and piles and piles and piles of books. Mountains of books, you know, like step ladder size high books. Well, this is a bit overwhelming, you think, and you're not really sure what, what you should be doing. But you're keen, you want to find out about long-term fitness goals, so you step forward because you see uh, something catches your eye and it's a, a book cover and it's like a healthy person on the front. And in the absence of any other indication, you're going to get some answers to the questions you want answered. You decide to proceed, grab this book, you pick it up, and it's not what you want. And then you kind of look at the rest of this pile, and remember there's piles over here and piles over there, and you hold this book and it's, it, it's, it's useless, it just doesn't tell you. But what's worse is all the books in this pile don't seem to have anything to do with this book. And you, you notice over there another one with a healthy looking person, so you kind of go over to the next pile and you try that out and you pick it up and it's the same thing. It's like, well, this is very random, why is this book here and that book over there? You kind of move a few books out of the way and put, pull down, but nothing. You're just pulling up books that kind of look okay, look like they're going to answer what you want, but they, but they don't. So you give up with that and you're like, okay, okay. Calm down. So you, you, you walk over to the other side to see if it's any different. You walk to the far corner of the arena, more piles of books, another book catches your eye, but it's the same thing. Move to the next mountain, it's the same thing. You just, something catches your eye, it's kind of exciting to look at, but when you, when you uh, dive deeper, there's it's no, nothing there. Nothing's helping you find what you want. And after about 15, 20 minutes, you're, you're over it and you're like, I'm out of here. So you go, like, I'm gonna have some lunch, get my excitement and enthusiasm back, and then I'm gonna go next door and see what Library 2 has to offer. Okay, so you've got some food inside you, still excited, you wanna go down to uh, find out about long-term fitness goals, so you head over to Library 2. Similar architecture, similar presentation, difference. You walk through the door, and in the same plush environment of beautiful furniture and, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, refreshments that you can, can can fuel yourself up for your work ahead. Lots of people buzzing around. Uh, lots of signs saying, ask me anything. Uh, reception desks that look totally organized. Lots of doors going in different directions underneath different headings. You just feel excited with the energy around and you walk up to the reception underneath where it says, ask me anything. And you tell this lady, the librarian that you would like some help finding out about long-term fitness goals. You'd like to do some research around long-term fitness goals and can she help? She says, of course I can. Come with me. She holds your hand, she takes you through a door, she walks you into uh, the same big cavernous arena, but the difference is this time, 
aisles and aisles of books, shelves and shelves of books, staircases, ladders, color coding, um, uh, uh, big signs with topics and categories, and maps on the floor, color coded. It's a huge difference. And within seconds, this lady is taking you to the exact bookshelf where you can fill your heart's content with research around long-term fitness goals. And you spend the rest of the afternoon there absolutely just filling up on what you need to know to get the answers to the questions you have around this topic. Now, obviously, I, I kind of made that up, as you can tell, but the point I'm trying to make is, if you dive into this, Google tells you that none of this is a secret. Google wants to help you, wants to uh, uh, help you succeed, and it gives you tools to do so. And it blatantly says, got a, they, they deliver a short video, it's about three to five minutes, and it says how search works. And if you watch it, it is talking about libraries, because the reason the library could the, the reason the librarian could take you to the exact place you needed to go was because the whole of the books, all of the research topics were indexed. Indexed. Every single book in there was indexed. It had a label, it had a category, it had a title. It had all the things that the librarians knew that they would need to go and get exactly what you need. Down to like the the, the two or three books we're going to hone right in and if you dive into why uh, how google search works it's only a three minute video they, they, they've delivered itself map cuts and it tells you it's just a little kind of animated video and it is all about indexing so what happens is google like i say is not in it doesn't keep a copy of your website google does not like um have your whole website sitting on its servers. But what it does have, it has an index of all the web pages out there in the world. And, and the way it's, they're called robots, that's all techie stuff, excuse me, I'm not gonna get into that. But um, the, the, I guess the robots are like the librarians and the, the indexers, and they literally crawl around the library of the, of the internet world and they index each page with some categories and labels and some tags and all those sorts of things and they they read from the top starting with your url you know your domain name and then any urls of any pages or blog posts or information services they look at that url and then they go from the top down sort of down the page looking at things like titles uh, descriptions images the first paragraph um, headings that are in there and all of those things as they go down the page the, the higher up the page you, you've you've sort of done the right indexing makes a difference to whether google can decides to dig deeper you know, if, it, if it sees what it's looking for at the top it'll sort of go down check on it check on it and it might might go away and come back and, and index a bit further, uh, you know, a few days or weeks later or whatever. And slowly but surely, the more deeper down that page that you have um, made that uh, website answer the questions to what someone's looking for, then the higher likelihood that when someone types in that question into the search engines, you come up. So, so that really is it. So the the difference between Library 1 and Library 2 really comes down to one thing. Library 2, sorry, Library 1 was really only interested in looking good. All it wanted to do was look good. But no one really cared what happened after that. There was no substance to it afterwards. There was no depth to it. So if you wanted a pro, it was all just flaky on the outside. Whereas Library 2 was totally engineered to help to, to optimize your search request. So like I said, you wanted to um, find out about long-term fitness goals, that was your request. You went down to the library and library two was optimized to make that happen. It really is as simple as that. that. That is the fundamental difference in indexing geared towards making it um, how 
making it uh, effective at delivering the results that the person searching is looking for. And that is why some websites get found and some don't. That is why some websites come up on page one and other websites languish on page two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just never get seen. Does that make sense? You put your heart and soul into building a new website, but behind the scenes it wasn't optimized, so it looks good, but you're the one down on page two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten that never gets found when people are searching for the goods and services that you offer because it's not indexed in the way uh, that Google wants it in order for Google to help you be found. That, my friend, is it. Now, obviously, there's lots of nuances and there's lots of technical things, but if you have only ever built a website and concentrated on making it look good, it, that's not enough. That is not enough. Okay, so tomorrow I'm going to go a little bit deeper into this and explain how, you know, why it really comes down to can you pull people into your goods and services through, through the search function or do you have to push them, you know, and sort of force people to, to find you? Now, forcing is very time consuming. We're talking push versus pull. Um, you know, pull marketing, you just, they just come to you, they find you. Push marketing means you're constantly exerting pressure. So I'm going to explain how the search engines um, that push, how the search engines kind of fit into that push push versus pull uh, marketing mechanism. So yeah, tune in tomorrow, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll dive a di bit deeper. So uh, once again, Colin Clapp, online marketing done for you. Hope you got something out of this. Oh yeah, one last thing. Remember, yesterday, go to your developer, ask them for regular, weekly, monthly Google Analytics stats that you, they're free, they should be able to give them to you. I'm really curious, leave a comment somewhere. Did your developer tell, uh, give you um, the stats? You know, Is he willing and able to give them to you? Uh, and out of curiosity, how much is he gonna charge? But these stats are freely available, okay? And you are entitled to get a performance report. So on that positive note, let me know how you get on and uh, I will see you tomorrow, same place. Uh, Time, I'm not quite sure, but see you tomorrow. Okay, take care now, bye-bye.